Hey folks, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Second Sun Woodworks. My name is Caleb, and today I'm going to be starting off a series on how I built a bar cart with some scrap wood left over from some other projects, as well as from a cabinet that I disassembled, uh, and I got these cool looking doors. Hope you will stick around for the build. This year has been a year filled with projects to try and get more organized, especially when it comes to my workshop, which is at a rental in Santa Barbara, California, that I share with other roommates. Um, but luckily, they let me use the shop quite often, and uh, since I am an organized fellow, I have gotten the shop into much better shape than it was when I first arrived. Uh, and one of the things that I recently did was take apart an old cabinet that uh, had some paint and other supplies in it, uh, but it wasn't very useful in terms of storing lots of things, and so I decided to take it apart, see if I could salvage some wood from it, uh, and then use some of the wood for a project. Um, and so from that I decided to use the two doors, which uh, you can see here to the right, uh, to make some sort of bar cart. But I needed to have legs for the bar cart, so I grabbed some leftover 2x4s that I had sitting in the rafters, and I decided to cut them down to 36 inches long, and then plane them down in my planer so that they had uh, nice flat surfaces so that I could glue two of them together at a time. Uh, and then I would be able to put those blanks onto my lathe and turn down some fancy spindle legs. Now, if I was attempting to fully square up these boards before gluing them together, it would probably be a good idea to use my jointer before using the planer so that I had a fully flat surface to work off of when I pushed it through. Uh, but since I'll just be gluing these up together and then turning them down on my lathe, it didn't really matter. Once I had eight separate 36 inch long 2x4s planed down in my planer, I laid them out on my workbench and figured out the best way to glue two of them at a time together. Then I pulled out my clamps and got to gluing. Since I just wanted to do two of these glued together at a time, I made sure to face uh, the faces of the 2x4s that didn't have glue toward the other ones that didn't have glue, uh, so that uh, in the end I came out with four separate 4x4s, or what would seem like a 4x4. Once the 4x4s or all of these glued up 2x4s had fully cured, I pulled them out of the clamps and I decided uh, to do a few extra 2x4s um, that I had left over and go ahead and glue those up so that I could use them for extra spindles later on in the project if I needed to. Then after that I went over to my joiner and used my joiner to clean up the faces of the four separate glued together 2x4s. which wasn't really completely necessary since I will be uh, turning these down on my lathe later on in the project, but the reason I wanted to do this is because I will be adding some dados and some spindle holes uh, in these legs, which you will see later on. And so I wanted to be able to uh, measure these out on a nice and square surface um, uh, on these four separate legs. Thank you. 
Once I had these four separate legs cut down to the exact length, which was 36 inches long, I laid them out on my workbench and just double checked that they were all the same length and that they were all squared up together. Uh, and once I was sure about that, I went ahead and clamped them all together so that when I started to mark out the areas where I would be adding some dado cuts as well as holes for additional sp spindles, uh, that they would all be uh, lined up and have the exact same cuts. Now this is super important to do before you turn down these legs since once you turn them down they will be round and you won't really be able to do any sort of cuts with a circular saw or even on a table saw. Um, and so you want to make sure, at least I wanted to make sure, to do the various cuts, uh, the dado cuts beforehand. Um, as well as the uh, just the drill holes in the legs uh, that will be used for additional spindles to uh, add to the bar cart. And so the way I did that is I made a, uh, a guide with an additional 2x4 um, and then just used my uh, hand drill to drill out the various holes. Once the holes were all drilled, I went ahead and used my circular saw to cut uh, two separate dados in the legs. And these dados will actually serve as the area where the uh, two separate cabinet doors that I will be using for this bar cart will sit into the legs. I will end up having to uh, expand those dado cuts just a bit more later on the project uh, as you can see that they didn't completely fit. After doing just a bit of thinking about the orientation of the legs with regard to the cabinet doors which will be laying face down for the two different levels of the bar cart, I went ahead and flipped the legs over and drilled two separate holes on each of the legs uh, for additional spindles uh, that will be um, added to the bar cart legs later on. Then the very last step before turning the blanks down on my lathe was to pre-drill holes on the bottom side of the four separate legs for the wheels that I will be uh, or casters that I will be adding to the bar cart later on. I found some really cool antique looking ones that I think uh, will look really good on this cart. Now at this point the four separate blanks that will be used for the four separate legs of the bar cart were ready to be turned down on my lathe. Each of them had two separate dado cuts uh, that will be for the bottom and the upper uh, levels of the bar cart as well as each of them had four separate holes drilled into them where I will be adding spindles that will act as rails for the uh, two different levels of the bar cart. All right, let's head over to the lathe and get down to some dirty turning. It's gonna get messy. Turning on a wood lathe is probably one of the messiest as well as loudest uh, tools that you can use in the woodworking shop or at least I've found that to be the case. Sawdust ends up flying all over the place uh, and the noise if you don't use your lathe cutting tool correctly can be pretty intense. Um, but beyond all of that it's one of the more enjoyable uh, tools to use in the shop. Reminds me a lot of throwing a pot uh, on a wheel with um, clay. The first step is to center the blank uh, just like it is when you are centering a piece of clay. It's extremely important to be very careful and safe when you're using this type of tool, especially when it comes to the tool rest, which you can see here that I'm, I'm making a really big mistake um, throughout the uh, cutting of this spindle. I move the tool rest while the piece is still rotating on the lathe, which 
I highly recommend that you do not do. Um, and I'm going to be releasing a video, if I haven't already, uh, that relates to why this isn't a good idea. I had an accident with this lathe and with one of the spindles uh, that kind of taught me a quick lesson on why it is a bad idea to move the tool rest. But nevertheless, um, be really safe when you're using this type of tool. Have respect for it. Uh, it's got a lot of power um, and you do not want to get hurt. Alright folks, that is the end of this first episode uh, of a series on how I built a bar cart. I hope that you will stick around or stay tuned uh, for the next uh, parts of this series. Um, I think you'll enjoy it. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Uh, leave a comment below. If you have any questions, leave them below. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, that way you can stay tuned for new project videos as I release them in the future. If you haven't, check out my library. Got lots of fun stuff over there. And then, like I always say, get in the shop, build something cool. Take care.